Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us at the Microsoft Power BI UK user group. I'm your host, Leon Gordon, and we're back with another fantastic session to help us learn Power BI in more detail and continue to grow together as a community. Um, as always, we want this to be a fantastically interactive session, so the Q&A will be open shortly um, to get your questions in. Um, so please do feel free, as always, to let us know where you're joining us from. Hopefully, again, we have a global audience that are all going to enjoy this topic and session together. As I mentioned this topic and session, we're going to be looking at why Icon Map is the best thing to happen to Power BI with Mimon Zhao, or better, better known, shall I say, as Mim. So Mim is a business intelligence analyst. Um, he has a BSc in civil engineering and started working with the Power BI stack in around 2016. He is an active blogger um, and also likes to blog on the topics of Oracle, Primavera, Power BI, GIS and BigQuery. So without any further ado, I shall hand you over to Mim. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the introduction. So the, the session will be uh, like uh, split in those four different topics. So the first, uh, first section is basically if you try to plot more than 30,000 points and how I can map like literally save the day. So this one is uh, my personal experience trying to do that between 2017 till 2020 when I could map version two was released. Um, so the first section is based on personal experience. The, um, the remaining section it, it just me messing around with uh, with I can map. So, which hopefully can be useful for you guys. So the second one is trying to aggregate, let's say you have like a massive data set and you want to plot it in Power BI. The third one is there is nice tricks. For example, if you want to, uh, to filter by distance or calculate distance just in interactive way, uh, the last section is um, is basically using something called dynamic and parameter, which I think is not really widely used, and the reason it's limited only to some data source. But you can do some interesting stuff. Like basically, you can do stuff that they are not available in a native way in Power BI, like calculating area. Or uh, calculating like route distance and you can do that. So let's start with the first section. So a bit of background, like why I end up like loving I could map. So I was working in a solar construction industry for like three years and Apologize. I hate all this publicity. Oh God. Sorry guys, just uh, ignore this one. Yep. So, yeah, the thing with uh, with a solar farm is that like a solar farm, basically it's a lot of piles, which are like, uh, and then the typical solar farm has more than 30,000 piles. And basically people, what they want, a uh, pile is this, this part and basically all you do is just um, you get those those pile and you hammer them in the ground and hopefully it's with like with good quality so it has to be like the exact location there is no twist and uh, and basically people on the field they want to see the status of those those files and the thing is they don't want aggregation or anything. They want like to see the exact location. So 
as you know, but the Power BI has a hard limit of 30,000 points. So you cannot plot more than that usually. And and yeah, it's it's become a problem. Actually, it's quite funny. So if we had less than 30, then probably there is no need for this presentation. It just happened that for solar, they need more than 30,000. So the this one, just an example using QGIS. Uh, QGIS is a software. Uh, it's a free open source software for GS application. And we we'll talk a little bit about uh, the WGS84. Basically, usually when you work with maps, the coordinate you get is just like the standard latitude and longitude. The reality is on, on the field, like no one used that because it's not really so precise. So basically what, what happened is that people give you a list of coordinates and they don't even tell you which coordinate reference system they're using. And they're like, I don't know, maybe thousands of different system. And personally, I think it should be like crime, giving someone coordinates without uh, telling them which reference system. But anyway, so that's why you need to use QGS. And with QGS, you can get the coordinate and switch from any system used to our standard WGS84. So my first experience, let's say the first try here, I said, okay, that should be easy. Let's just plot reporting Power BI. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit weird. That's not, doesn't look like a whole solar farm. When you click here, this is like the different status. Uh, obviously, there is an issue. And problem is, Power BI will tell you that there are many Y values and basically what it does mean the default map visual in Power BI has a limit of 3500. So obviously it's a not it's not really a very good option. Luckily R has a great integration in, in Power BI. And to draw that map, <coughs> excuse me, literally all you need is those three lines item. And to be more precise, it's only one line item. It's this one you just to import the library and this one just to plot it. So it's extremely easy to plot it. And let me show you here. Uh, yeah, I put public report, but it doesn't really work. Uh, as you know, our visual uh, is are not supported in published to web. So yeah, just using, I don't know if you can see the code here. No, you have to see in the desktop. Let me just open the desktop. And let me just show you here the speed, so it's all right. So when you slice, uh, here it's 40,000 uh, dot. So you can see here. It's not bad, it take a bit of like a couple of, uh, couple of seconds to render. And we'll, we'll talk about kind of for here. Yep, so it's literally, as I said, just three line item. So it's really 
notice here some you may notice that i mean we do have a question coming in from yep. mark ah, yes LinkedIn. yes um, and they've, they've mentioned that um with r it's not currently possible to to publish to web do you have any workarounds um that would work in that situation at all no no i if if you know you let me no, I, I ask, no, it's blocked, unfortunately. Okay, no problem, thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, by the way, it's it's not, it's not technical limitation, it's commercial limitation, so. And usually it's very hard to get work around when it's commercial. Um, uh, the thing is, you will notice here uh, on the desktop is is faster than what's in the service. So later we show like more dramatic uh, example. So it's good. Yep, uh, our visual are fantastic. They have a limit of one hundred and fifty. So yeah, that's that's great. But usually there's always a problem. Um, yeah, at that time, and I was, by the way, this is like, was in 2017, so I didn't have the service. So I was just using Power BI desktop, and the reason we didn't have the service, because officially we had, like, at the corporate level, we used another BI tool, but I wasn't interested in another BI tool. I was using my preferred BI tool, which is for this desktop, and there was no service, so I said fine. I would just use uh, the desktop, and actually, <clears throat> you can do some nice tricks here. Uh, I, I I put a link here to my blog. Basically, what you can do. I know people probably are like shocked, saying like, "Why do you want to print?" that when you are in, in my industry, uh, printing high quality PDF is rather important. So I put a link here at the advantage of uh, using R, you can generate like high quality PDF. Uh, I put like all the code here and this is just, as you can hear, an example. You put your, um, you get your data, you update it and then generate the PDF which you distribute. Uh, yeah, it's it seems like uh, archaic, but in some industry, yes, we still print. And um, this one is just for historical reasons. So basically you're saying, okay, you use Power BI desktop alone. That's good. So how do you share interactive maps? And at that time, basically, what I was doing, <coughs> uh, this is for a couple of years, so it's horrible, so don't judge me on that. You can do actually, basically you can use Power BI desktop with Python and R integration to generate self-contained HTML file that you can distribute. Uh, I hope no one has to do that, but in case, whatever reason, you couldn't have access to the service, then you can do that. It's just a workaround and it has no value for this presentation, but I, I wanted just to show like how people on the field doing some weird stuff once you don't have access to a service. So yeah, um, there is a link. You can have a look there if you want. And actually, I was very happy with that uh, weird setup for like a couple of years. And I even joined the, the local R user group. So it was like happy days. It just happened. We have 
a problem. Basically, we got the Power BI service. And my weird setup just stopped working for some simple reason is that the R visual cannot call external resources. And for example, in this case, the background, to get the background, I'm calling Mapbox service to plot it, but with R visual, at least when I say R visual, it's like the, the visual where you type the code. I'm not talking about custom R visual, which is different beast. So uh, that's a problem because my visual cannot work in the service. So you need to come up uh, with workaround. And this one is like the weirdest workaround I ever done. So basically, and I put the code here, is obviously you cannot call another object. Fine. So what you do, you just load the object, the binary object in the data model. But probably you're asking, it's not possible because Power BI, you cannot load binary data. Luckily in R, yeah, R can be like, uh, it's a very interesting programming language. So basically what you can do in R, you can just say, any object, you can save it as a text file representation. So, once you have it as a text file, then I load it here using Power Query. And basically, yeah, so get a binary object, which is like an image or, or raster. A uh, raster in this case is this background. Change it to text file, load it to data model as text file. And then on the runtime, it will take the text file and change it back to binary. It's a, some people actually like this trick they use for other stuff. Like if you want to like load binary stuff, not necessarily your uh, image, maybe I don't know, like video or something like that. But the thing is, there is uh, you can't just get any binary and start loading. There is a limitation. And you need to remember this number is 32,766. It's that's like the maximum length or like width of a column. So you cannot put a text that's more than that. So that's the first limitation. And again, the second limitation is the, as I said, like the 30,000 rows. So you need to play basically split your your model so the maximum will be 30,000 and then later using like just split and and later grouped again and and get back your your r binary so yep and it did work actually but again, it's a problem. The performance of R, and this is not only really specific to, to my case, in general, R works well. Like when you usually when you see demo, uh, people doing presentation, they simply show you like a simple use case where R is not rendering a lot of data. But if you have like a complex visual, and map usually are complex. It's slow, like it's extremely slow. And actually in my, in my case, that was like the first time I opened a ticket. And the guy in the support, basically they said it's by design. So it is, like you have to live with it. The problem is not R by itself. I'm oh, sorry, let me just show you example here. 
you would notice, let's say I just changed the slicer apply, it will take like 50 seconds just to render. And you will be surprised the problem is not all rendering. Apparently it take 30 seconds to get the yeah, put different way. You know like how R works. Like all you do is just you give the um, Power BI send the code to R environment to run the code, and R will send back an image. Apparently the bottleneck is R sending back an image. It takes nearly 40 seconds. So obviously it's not great uh, user experience. But on the bright side, they can see the, the background. Uh, unfortunately, it's only image, so you cannot like zoom and 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 move it around. So yeah, I was uh, in this situation for a couple of months, and there was basically no solution. I know potentially I could have used Mapbox. At uh, that time, basically Mapbox, you can generate um, so like tile, you know, like a fixture tiles. Thing is, and then you can load, like you can show like millions of of coordinates in in a Power BI visual. Uh, the thing is, at that time, I wasn't really ready and to use it because the data changed so much. So you need to update the visual in Mapbox and then I didn't want to load like private data in Mapbox. There is absolutely no problem with that. It's a very secure problem uh, platform, but it's something that I didn't feel comfortable doing. But for you guys, like probably that's the like one of the options. So, so yes. Then, and Mim, sorry, just yep. to jump in. Yep. Um, Fernando um, asks if he's correct in thinking that another problem um, with with our with our not just performance is actually the personal data gateway. Actually. In my case, no, I don't need the gateway. Uh, yes, OK, uh, I understand. R has different utilization, so probably he's referring to using R to do data preparation. So yes, it's a problem because when you do data prep, like in Power Query, you need a gateway. So yes. But in 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 this case, um, I'm using just R to show visual, so I don't need a gateway. But yes, definitely, if you do it for data prep, it's a gateway, which is, to be honest, it's a no go. Like no one wants to use a gateway. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Me in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So. Something like it was just a miracle. Uh, there is this British guy, uh, James, and he released Icon Map. That was like version two, and Icon Map support the WKT. And like the genius of Icon Map is that the WKT basically it's a format to describe geometry, and you know like. Um, the reality, like any complex geometry, you can just change it back to a very simple. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Simple, like basic future. So basically, all you need is like a point and a polygon and like a line string. And the thing is, usually when you think about maps in Power BI, you think about um, like topo JSON file where the, like the geometry is fixed, but with icon map, the geometry itself can be measured. And when you say measure, and that's like the whole point of Power BI, it's dynamic, so you can generate 
geometry on the fly. And you can do some very interesting solutions. It's a fantastic and pers as far as I'm concerned, that's the best thing that happened to maps in Power BI. And actually that's the only reason I'm doing this presentation. Like I feel a personal obligate, like just giving back, like 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 the guides saved me in from a big trouble. So I'd say like the minimum I can do is just do a presentation and say you guys just go and use icon map. So this part is rather personal. So the beauty is let me show you another report. The only complaint I have with icon map is they should have released like four years earlier. So first thing compared to R. So you can like you can zoom. Obviously here the data is uh, is totally it's a fake solar farm. I put it in in the I put the background in, in Algeria, so just make sure that it's and as you can see here, the performance is nearly, I would say, sub second. So it's fantastic. But the question is uh, Power BI still has a limit of 30,000 throw, but here we're showing 40,000, exactly 42,000 coordinate. And this is the like if you have to take one thing from presentation is hopefully is this one. It's something called like uh, you reduce the geometry. And this trick actually I learned from that was like a bug report in an R visual. And like one guy was complaining that it's very slow. So the solution was to use multipoint. And basically, because at the end, your audience, all they want, they want to see a map. They're not interested how do you plot it, as long as it keeps the same. Yeah, I'm using R here. Let's go back, maybe. So they want to see here. They don't care how it was plotted, as long as it keeps the same visual information. So for example, here you see like these are all dots that if you change those dots with a black square, then people will be happy as long as it's it's keep the same format. So the idea is very simple. Let's say you have like five points, and the first point is it's a blue, the second point blue, and then the last three points are red. You can keep the same information, but instead of point, you change it to multiplot. So all you say is that let's me group this and this and put the attribute color blue and do the same for red. And why it's interesting, uh, you can keep the same visual information, but you reduce massively the. Let me just check if it's this one. No. Show. So in this PIPX, I'm reducing the number from 42,000 to literally 26 rows. The, the reality will be like probably people want like more granularity, but usually it will be less. But this one is more like an extreme example. Just like to tell you how much we can simplify. So this is the original data, which as you can see, 42,000. And here I'm creating a new table. I'm just grouping and creating this measure. And uh, this is calculate table. 
just for convenience. So I'm grouping all the points using the common status and like the block, uh, which is in this case, because I decided that we need to know the every individual block. So we don't want one visual or like one one block, one polygon that take all this. So we want this um, individual block here. And using that grouping, as you can see, it's only 26 rows. And it's fantastic because you can use that. Probably not. Uh, I will show you some example where we'll use the same technique. So it's not only point to multipoint. You can simplify your geometry from point to point and lines. So you, if you have, let's say here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have like seven points with three different color. You can change it, say, this three, change it to one, one line. And you need to put the point here because the color has changed, another line and the point. And again, the reason you do that you simplify from seven rows, you simplify to one, two, three, four, to four rows. And here it's even more dramatic from seven to one row. And Min, just to jump in there with yep. a couple of um, a couple of questions from, yep. from Jeff. Um, so Jeff's asked um, to the wider audience as well, why doesn't Power BI let you plot um, that many points natively? Does anybody know? I, uh, I suspect for two reasons, just my understanding. <clears throat> because Power BI basically, it's a shared resource architecture, especially like in like Power BI Pro and let's say free. And it takes a lot of resources, CPU resources. So I think they put a hard line in the sand, just trying to reduce resource usage. The second one, I think, the, like the first one is just speculation. Second one, I I talked privately with them, with the dev who create custom visual and basically, I may be wrong, so this is just my thinking. The, the architecture of Power BI, like when you transfer data set from the data model to the visual, it's rather slow by design. Because like the, the apparently the verity pack was designed for aggregation, not for yeah, not for individual rows. And just I appreciate this question. So you asking like that's a legit no. question. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Um, and Jeff has just asked as well to clarify, um, are, are you saying that the icon map would allow you to plot more than Power BI's limit or are you grouping for uh, for efficiency reasons? Yes, I'm I'm grouping. I'm grouping for not efficiency, like I don't have a choice because still it's limited to 30,000. But the thing is, I can use those uh, those tricks just to reduce the geometry. But here it's very important. Like, well, we're not losing any uh, visual clues. I don't know how to say it properly in English. So it's the same information. It just we simplify how it's plot. So instead of plotting seven, because people what they want to say, okay. Someone wants only. Yeah, let's say for example this one. So this one has all individual. So here I'm just like cheating. The reality is I'm not plotting the individual point. I'm just grouping all those points into something called multipoint, which is faster to plot. 
I, I show another example. It's like using solar farm progress as a reference is not uh, is not great, but there will be a reason I kept it. It's just to say, like when someone complain about emission in the future, it's not you know, people are not renting like. Sometimes, for example, I remember I was complaining why Power BI doesn't plot more than 30. And you get like dismissive comments saying it's not important. Yes, it's maybe it's not important for 99%. But when your job is literally to plot more than 30,000, then it's extremely important. So the idea is just friendly advice. If someone complain about something like never Never dismiss it. If something is not important for you, it doesn't mean that it's not important for general. So, <clears throat> the, like the key finding here. And that's a great point as well, Mim. I just want to jump in there because I believe we have James um, Dales with us on, on the call. Um, and James has made a point, and hopefully he can clarify if it is um, James Dales, obviously the developer behind um, Icon Map and uh, Microsoft MVP. Um, but James has made the point that Icon Maps is limited to 30,000 rows of data, but those rows can contain more than one point using the multi-point object. This has a limitation that you can only interact with, the, with those groups rather than the individual points. Yep, yep. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So the, the key finding here, and I think it's very important, like if you start a project and like Power BI doesn't support something in a native way, so don't take it personal, like, don't try to do crazy hacks just to make it work. Yeah, I'm it's easy to say that because I'm I'm just doing the opposite. I'm just showing that. But that 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 experience that my previous experience has changed my perception. So if a manager asks about something, if it's support in native way, I just do it. Otherwise I would say it's not possible. And I know like when we start yeah, when you start in this the business, it's hard to say no because people will say maybe it's not limitation of Power BI, it's your own knowledge limitation. But generally, like just start to learn to say no, let's do different way. And there are always different ways. Like if I can't show the individual point, I can show a polygon. Just live with it. If you are not, if you are not happy just use GS software or something and um, always try there is a lot of stuff that works but then like for example R the R is fantastic but just try it with the real data because some stuff works very well if you have a thousand row but it doesn't scale so try not to use hacks in in production and EconMap is fantastic. I love it. I think it's it's a great piece of engineering. So that's the key finding in the first part of the presentation. So here I will just skip them. So using the same tricks, this multi-point, you can do fun stuff. So here I'm showing nearly half a million points. And I'm just grouping it to uh, 4,000 rows. Just to make clear, it's probably too, it's slow to render, but the point here is uh, I put a link to blog, and uh, the point here is that you can you can you can show more. Um, this one I hope is the more in, more interesting use case. Let me just show it here. Let me close this one. Basically, it's let's say someone gave you uh, like one million coordinates, and he asked you to to plot it. And one trick is you can use uh, aggregation. So in this case, 
I'm using uh, equal map with like four million coordinates. And the first thing, okay, we show up hopefully. I don't have a mouse, I need to. So I'm just having this uh, hexagon and it's like a heat map. But it's not like a native heat map in, in Power BI. And you can go to and the video like here it's red, it means okay, probably this area has. By the way, I have no idea about Chicago or anything. I just the reason I used it was like the first literally data set I found with a lot of coordinate. So when you click here and then you click here, it will drill down to individual point. Apparently this corner is quite dangerous, it seems. So how to do that? And it's literally 4 million rows. So again, because equal map is so flexible. So the first thing we do is you need to generate a grid. And the grid is, let me just show it here. By the way, like just use QGIS. It's uh, it's awesome, and it's it's free. So to generate the the grid, I'm using QGIS. And the reason you need to use the GS software because yeah, because Earth is not flat. So even like a simple grid, it's a pain. So you need to make sure that all the individual element. So here that's the example of the grid. Mm. By the way, like uh, when you do presentation, probably it's a good idea to have a mouse. Yep, so I'm generating this, uh, this grid here, which you can get here if I remember, just here and say create. Uh, and then you can choose if it's rectangle or uh, hexagon and you can choose the size. The idea is don't choose like very small size, but still like. Uh, um, icon map is limited, obviously 30,000, so you don't want more than 30,000. Right? So you generate all this and then. You get your. You can do it in QGIS. But for me, just for convenience, because the data was already in BigQuery, uh, I use the BigQuery to to do like a, a geometry join. So basically, you take all the coordinates and say, in this little hexagon here, how many points does exist, and do the join. Um, it took the yeah. I think it took nearly one minute to do the join, but you don't need. You can do it in SQL Server. It's uh, SQL Server does does support uh, geometry join. Or you can just use it here in QGIS. So it's it's like easy part. Uh, you have options. <coughs> and. That's the beauty. Again, of icon map is that the geometry is using a DAX measure. So in this DAX, all I'm saying, the DAX will. Let me just go back here. The DAX will detect if there is a filter, if there is like selection. And when it does detect one selection, it switch the geometry. To be using. Individual point. If there is no selection, it switched the geometry back to be using polygon. So basically that's that's the trick. And you can do like more 
more interesting stuff. So yeah, I'll, I'll go like very quickly here, probably. This is some nice, um, like some nice hack here. Yeah, sorry, just give me a second here. So uh, there is the blog here and explain to you how it's done. So here's just like for for fun. So you have like a bench of point and you can select two points and Power BI will just draw uh, a line and it will give you the the distance between the two lines. It, yeah, I, I'm just cheating. All I'm doing is I'm getting two icon and it has to be icon map, like you cannot use with all of visual. Um, I'm using two icon map and like two layers, one on top, like one visual on top of another. And icon map, you can put the background as transparent. And I'm keeping the, the same zoom level, so you can fix the zoom. And so when I click, the reality is, it's like it's two separate, uh, it's, yeah, it's two separate map, but just give the impression that they work together. So here you can select and it give you the, the distance, but the distance is, is uh, how to say, a bird flyer. So it's like a straight line. It's not like route distance or anything. Uh, there is another one. This, this one, I like it. This one, actually, the ID I stole it from Tableau. I'm happy that we can do it now. So you can select the distance. And when you click, it will show a map with a buffer, like with a distance, how much. And you can see here, it's filtering less than this, this number. So it's, it, this one, Probably it may be useful in real life. Yep, and after that, yeah, dynamic and parameter. So this one, before people get too excited, um, it doesn't work with SQL Server. Uh, it's on the work, apparently. So what you can do is that, I just give you here example. What you can do because uh, obviously Power BI does not support JS calculation. So instead of that, I'm using here I could map just to do the selection, send back those points selected, send it back to a database, do the calculation there, and get it back. So here, when I select those points, it will give me back a polygon with the area is pretty cool. Uh, the thing with uh, M parameter, they works only with uh, like BigQuery or Snowflake and uh, uh, I don't know, Azure IDX. Apparently SQL Server is, uh, people are working on it and I'm pretty sure that this, uh, this pattern will be more used once SQL Server is supported. And yeah, again, it works only with direct query. Because in this blog, in my blog actually, which was like one of the most popular, and always the same question is how to make it work with Oracle or SQL or now it's, uh, and how to do it with import. No, it doesn't. So, yeah. Uh, this one, let me try. It's just a hack. This is like an extreme hack. Usually I shouldn't show it as a demo, but I'll give it a go. It may work. So this one is using the same approach. But unfortunately, there is there is a currently a bug with the Power BI driver because it's a direct query. Instead of sending 
one, let's say two queries for VA and the setting four, and because the query is slow, it makes the, the experience uh, not very optimum. But the idea is the same. So uh, I'm using like icon map here, and there is another layer. And the first layer is just to, to do the selection. So I select those two points, and the idea is uh, M parameter, like Power BI will send back those two points, do the calculation in the database, which is basically found in the, I hope it works, I'm not sure. Found in like the, the shortest distance between two points and get the back. Yep, actually that's great. Get back this line and get the distance. So, yeah, it may be hopefully useful. The thing is, if you guys find it interesting, uh, I I put those uh, future requests. It's basically like this one. It just I, I know it the. Basically, the way Power BI desktop, like uh, Power BI does not filter itself. So, for example, in all those examples, Power, like basically Power BI, how it's designed, when you click on something, it will filter something else, but it will never filter itself. But in the case of map, it will be fantastic. Like imagine that, uh, like in here, Like we can do a lot of stuff. Like instead of me, I don't know, me selecting something here, and it will draw it into the other other copy of of icon map. If we can just click and somehow it will auto filter itself and generate the same on the same map, it will be fantastic. It will not happen. Next, uh, I thought they will change how DAX works, but it will be cool. Sometimes you put like future requests just just there, but uh, uh, this one is um, the same thing like uh, Power BI is chatty. You expect one query and Power BI ends up sending 10,000 query. Uh, this one is very particular. I expect I expect Power BI to send one query, not two. And this one make me a bit disappointed. Because when you write, yeah, you write like a custom query. And the only reason why people want custom query because they don't want Power BI to start generating its own SQL. And still like Power BI managed to send two queries instead of one. And because the query here it's calculating distance between point, it's a heavy query, it takes time. Actually, it's using not even SQL, it's using JavaScript. So every extra query killed the experience. If it was faster, like who cares? But in this case, it's rather slower. So, uh, in the presentation here, just to uh, just so you guys like know what's going on with uh, the industry. Uh, in Google Data Studio, you can plot a million point, so it's not an issue. Um, Tableau recently add multi data set support, so you can like have multiple layers with different filters. Like this one is next level awesome. Like uh, Tableau basically now is becoming GS software, kind of. And here, when I said like Tableau is awesome, apparently Spotfire had this functionality since six years. So yeah, the, the bottom line is uh, uh, GS is not as great as it should be, but I can map make it usable. Yep, uh, if you guys have a question. 
Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Mim. I think you've answered one of our questions there, but I'll pose it to you anyway. Yep. Um, what, what would you like to see introduced in the future? Is there anything outside of the ideas that you've that you've commented on so far? Uh, there is this one. It will be. Yeah, you, you know, like I'm a user, I use all different software. So I'm like, I love Power BI because of the model that I like this one, uh, multi data set support. That will be like fantastic. Basically, what it does is you can, because currently in, in, in Power BI, like when you import, you, you can import only one, one data set, like one group of coordinates. And usually like in a normal data set, this is like what you want because it's not an issue because there is something called join. So if you want like different data, you can just join it or use a relationship uh, using the data model. But GS is different. Like GS, what do you want? You want to separate, to bring separate data set. They are not even linked. And probably you will ask him, so how do you join them? You don't because in GIS, the joint itself is the location. So you can do like amazing stuff. So for example, this one, instead of like here, instead of having different layers, because here all I'm doing, I'm just, uh, it's like, I'm just cheating. I'm getting two icon map and putting them on top of each other and make the background uh, transparent. But if we can get Power BI to say for this layer, just you can receive like three table and those three table are totally independent. They don't have a join. So we can do like cool stuff. We can like in the same, can, you can like just click and it will filter and you can show, um, I don't know, you can show for example, like the, the way, sorry, I'm not answering properly. So basically this is how GS work. GS work basically, you have different layers, you can hide, And we want this in Power BI. And it can be done. So if they say, no, no, we're not GS, that's nonsense. Because Spotfire had it in 2014, that's five years. And Tableau had it since a week or two. Actually, yeah, it's releasing next next week, I think. So yeah, uh, we want this in Power BI. There is no, there is no reason. And this excuse, if anyone from Microsoft is hearing like this excuse that Power BI is, is not a GIS software. That's nonsense. Yep. Perfect. Thanks, Mim. And um, James has said that obviously you've done a fantastic job in the in the in the presentation with us today. Um, and he also asks, is there anything on ideas for multiple data sets? Um, as he believes this is the most limiting factor um, for maps um, in Power BI. I think you've just touched briefly on that. Yeah, to be honest, uh, on purpose, I did not. I did not really add it as IDs.com. And the reason is. This is not. This is not uh, something that you expect from the user. I expect the product team to. To say like, yeah, it's it's 2022 people are expecting more from JS, so let's surprise them. I know it's a weird way of saying it, but it's not because um, generating multi data set will, will require a bit of investment, I guess, from the product team. I expect them to, to do it because it's pretty obvious now, especially now that Tableau has it. Yeah, it it, make, it makes total sense, and I, I believe that in in some areas where this has happened before, I know the product team are very open to hearing from from customers who have this specific need and use case. Um, so if there is one, it might be worthwhile imposing that um, yeah, to the team yeah. as well. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Just... Yes, yeah, no, no, you, you you're right. I I just lost uh, sometimes like you lose hope. So yeah, but. Uh, Probably I, I need to post an idea. You're right. 
Yeah, no, no problem at all. And I believe that that's, that covers all of our questions um, so far um, for today's yeah. session. Um, Mim, absolutely, as, as I mentioned, thank you very much for being with us, especially for the fact that you're joining us from, from Brisbane and um, you did start at 4 a.m. and I'm guessing that we're, we're, we're at 5 a.m. now. Yep. So uh, I really yeah. appreciate it. No, thank you very much. And uh, because James is in the session, I appreciate that. Uh, it was like, uh, I take Econ map in, in, a, in a personal way. And the reason is I was stuck for like three months and I couldn't find any solution. And, and the product basically, the, the product team basically said it's by design, so it's your problem. So I could map like save, save the real issue. So I appreciate that. That's uh, that's fantastic. So thank you very much, James. And James has just come through with, with another fantastic comment as well that uh, perhaps we need icon map to be a built in in visual. Um, I for I for one would uh, would would, sec would second that comment, and I'm sure maybe you would agree. I uh, actually I this is one of the biggest mystery of like you would think like you understand how the product team works that's one of the mysteries like why i could map is not added by default in power bi i i never i don't understand really i don't so. Well, what, what I would say is that um, obviously some of the users um, joining us today know know that James Dales is obviously um, um, the chairman of the London Power BI UK user group, and they do have a face to face meetup um, happening. I believe it is next week and I will put um, the link for that within the chat. So I believe that might be one of the one of the great questions to pose to James directly at the face to face yep. meetup. Um, and maybe we can get an answer directly on that. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, thanks again for the opportunity. That's uh, that was fantastic. And um, if if I do like any negative comment about Bovia, yeah, it's just like, like that's my tool. As I told you, like I have option to use something else, but I choose Power BI. But yeah, uh, some staff can be better, that's all. And thank you very much, appreciate it. Fantastic, Mim. Sorry, thank you very much once again, um, and thank you to everybody for being with us as well. Um, once again, I'd like to thank our hosts um, and associates on Data, and for our guest listeners listening into us today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you've been here with us at the Microsoft Power BI UK User Group, and we'll see you again soon. Stay safe.